In this video, we will find a missing coordinate when we are given the slope. In this video, I will go through the following two examples from the 2018 notes. If you do not have this notes packet or are watching this at another time, you should copy the examples on separate paper and follow along with the work, copying down anything that would be useful. Whenever I start a slope problem, I start by labeling my points x1, y1, and x2, y2, and filling in the slope formula with everything I know. In this case, I have an x1, a y1, an x2, a y2, and an m. And what's missing isn't the m, as we're used to, it's our x2. I filled in my formula, and now I have a few options. One option that will work every time you do this is to solve this as a proportion. When you solve a proportion, you cross multiply. So you multiply the denominator of one side times the numerator of the other. And you do that for both numerators with denominators. Don't forget to put things in parentheses that have more than one term in them, because we're going to need to distribute. For example, here, we'll distribute the 3 to the p minus 2. And I end up getting p equals negative 2. This means that if I take the points 2, 4, and negative 2, which is what we found for p, comma negative 2, I should get the given slope, which was 3 over 2. That would be a way to check this. And I've checked it, and I got it correct. Now let's go back before we solve the proportion. The reason I showed you the proportion method first is that that will work every time. But if I wanted to take this and just simplify the numerator on the right-hand side, I would have 3 over 2 equals negative 6 over p minus 2. And I might be able to use some different methods to solve this. So to get from 3 to negative 6, I did times negative 2. So to get from 2 to this whole thing, we would also do times negative 2. That means that our expression right here, p minus 2, has to be equivalent to the number negative 4. And I got negative 4 by doing 2 times negative 2. I, in my head, through logic, could figure out right from here that p then has to be negative 2. Again, there are multiple ways to solve these, but proportions will work every time. I'm going to do one more example out. If you don't feel like you need it, you don't have to watch it. So I'm going to fill my numbers into the formula m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, like so. And I get this. I put the negative 6 over 1 to help me in my calculations. So I have negative 6 over 1 equals 6 over negative 1 minus h. Again, we have a situation where you might be able to figure this out in your head. If we have a negative 6 here and a 6 here, then whatever we have on the left numerator, we multiplied by negative 1 to get to 6, which means that this number times negative 1 gives us negative 1 is what we want this denominator to equal. So the only thing that h in this case could be is 0. But let's say we didn't see that. Let's solve this like a proportion, because we can always do that. So I multiply 1 times 6 on one side, and negative 6 times negative 1 minus h on the other. And then I solve. And by doing this, I also get h equals 0. That means that the slope between the points 0, negative 8, and negative 1, negative 2, gives us a slope of negative 6.